Have you any final words of advice, Mike, for the viewers of this video uh, as they embark on their technology-focused careers? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, within the industry, we talk a lot about technology, and as technologists, we really do focus and have a passion for technology. But what we really talk a lot about, and a lot of organizations ask me about, is not necessarily technology. We say that technology is actually the easy part. It's the culture and the process and the people side of how we do things. So if I was uh, in the shoes of some of the people watching this video, don't forget that the people aspect is very important of, of DevOps and, and looking at, if I'm looking for employment, you know, what are the cultural uh, values and beliefs that they have within that? How do they work and what do they believe in? And, and as I talked about before, how's the flow of information? Do they have a culture of conscious inquiry and how is failure looked at? You know, if I'm looking at a potential employee, employer, you know, I want to ask some of those questions. I think fundamentally, um, even more fundamentally, if I'm looking at going into a career, before I do that, I think I really want to understand what my purpose is. What am I passionate about? And purpose is around values and beliefs. And I know, as an example, myself, you know, doing a lot of research in high energy physics, I had tremendous value in learning, I had tremendous value in beliefs and the scientific method, and using data to make decisions. And that's why I joined Red Hats, because I understand the purpose of this company is around peer review, meritocracy, and openness and transparency, which are all values and beliefs that are aligned with, with, um, with what, what I believe. And so there are ways of understanding our purpose. I think if you look at a survey recently, I think 80% of us uh, go to work and we don't feel full fulfilled. Part of that reason is because we don't understand our purpose and why we exist. I have lots of friends who went through various academic institutions without really understanding that. There are ways of looking at and understanding your purpose. Simon Sinek is a well-known thought leader uh, that will help you and actually has a program to uncover your purpose based on his own trials and tribulations in his own life and understanding why you exist, why you're on this planet. So make sure you understand your purpose. Now, understand technology, if you like technology, sure, that's part of it, but fundamentally, I think you need to look a little deeper. I think if you look at organizations, the ones that are going to survive in this fast-paced, competitive digital world, the new digital economy, the terms we throw around, are ones that do have a DevOps kind of culture and are well-adjusted. And I didn't mention this before, but DevOps lives the open source lifestyle. If you look at a lot of the mega trends in technology, it's all open source based. The sheer diversity, the capacity of the open source world, and quite frankly, people who work in open source, whether they're contributors like contributing code or whether they're reviewers or documenters, they're doing this on a volunteer basis, and doing things on a volunteer basis means you're passionate about what you do. And so that leads to higher quality products and projects and, quite frankly, innovation. So I would highly suggest people, if you want to, even if you're not a, a source code or a developer, you can look at open source as a means of innovation. There's tremendous open source communities out there that are more than just about the more than just software development. There's open source agriculture, there's open source hardware, there's all kinds of open source communities. So I, I would ask you to maybe go out and take a look and maybe you'll find your passion that way. I think as I if I was a technologist entering the market, as I said before, the market's looking for broad, diverse skills. We don't want to be a specialist in Java development or networking configuration or a particular application framework. We want somebody who understands not only the application but somehow a little bit of the infrastructure, maybe a little bit of security, and definitely have you know how understand how open source works because a lot of the tooling around DevOps it lives in the open source world. There's a tremendous amount of tooling out there. And I would you know, maybe advise you, maybe get involved in these open source communities, even if you're just uh, documenting or a reviewer of, of the, you know, using the software, not actually building the software. I would seriously look at that. The other thing I would recommend if you're interested in DevOps is the DevOps uh, handbook written by some of the forefathers of DevOps. Uh, Gene Kim, Jez Humble, John Willis, who's an expert in CI and CD pipelines that I talked about, as well as Patrick Dubois, who actually coined the term. And I'm quite proud of the fact, actually, uh, that DevOps really crystallized into a movement here in Canada, actually at the Velocity Conference in 2009, where a couple individuals, John Oswald from Flickr, which is where you can store pictures and, and things like that, photo albums online, got up in front of everybody and said, look, we're doing 10 deploys per day to production, which was 
the, there was a gust over the crowd, including, including Patrick Dubois, who was one of the people in the crowd, and said, look, wow, this is amazing what these people are doing. So there really was crystallizing Canada, and there's DevOps Days, TO is a group that you could join um, that has a meetup every year, and they have meetups uh, uh, all the time throughout, uh, throughout Toronto and Kitchener and other areas. And so look at joining a DevOps local group might be something you might want to consider. At the end of the day, you got to find your passion. I think uh, coming to work, even myself, I'm passionate about what I do every day. It still can be a grind, even though I'm passionate about it. Not every job is going to be absolutely perfect. De definitely find your purpose, your passion, and that will provide the filter of understanding you know, why you should take a particular job at a particular company or why you should focus in a particular field. The why you exist, why your purpose is the filter you use to make decisions. So. I can't overemphasize that enough. Thank you for talking to me today, Mike. Uh, your interview, I think, uh, with all of the questions, uh, provides a lot of value to the students. It will help them understand how they can uh, contribute uh, more to their organizations. And uh, I'm very grateful to you for doing it. My pleasure. Anytime.